What's up, New Hope family? Welcome to the Grow Podcast. My name is David. With me, as always, is Pastor Mark. We're here to help you take a next step in your relationship with Jesus. I'm so glad you're here. Hello and welcome to episode 146 of the Grow Podcast. So great to have all of you joining us today. Also great to have you joining us. Thank today, you. Mark. I never, I can't ever really remember what I say in like the intro of the podcast that, you know, that plays every single episode. Mm-hmm. So I always worry that I'm repeating exactly what they just heard my voice say. I, I think you here. usually do. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, but if you're still listening, you've gotten over it. So congratulations. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> They're dealing with it. All right. <sighs> How are things? Things are awesome. Oh, Yes. They're awesome. I believe I <clears throat> my life is almost always feels like it's awesome. Interesting. I just feel blessed. Well, you are. You get to work with me. <laughs> that is one of those blessings. Yes. It's not at the top. <laughs> but it is definitely one of the blessings. Of course. <laughs> well played. Well played. <laughs> oh man. Uh, uh we got to eat some free sandwiches yesterday. That was a blessing. We did. Although you haven't eaten yours yet. No, I haven't. It's still in the fridge. Yeah. Right I ate mine and it was wonderful. Uh, I'm, I figured mine is pretty soggy because I saw they put a lot of... Oh, the, you, you uh, did it Mike's way? I did it Mike's way. Yeah, which is yeah. the correct way to get it. But yeah, the, the juice, as they call mm-hmm. it. Uh, yeah, yeah. It'll, be, it'll, be, it'll be pretty soggy. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> I, I may eat it without the bread. Yeah, that's probably <laughs> the, you, Which is a shame because their bread is... Uh, oh, we have a new, sa- for those of you cur- confused. Yes, yeah, so we do need to explain this We have, we have this a one. new sandwich shop here in town. Jersey Mike's, it's not like it's a local place. It's a chain, but uh, it's delicious. It's it's one of my, it's probably my favorite of like the chain sub places. Really? It's not probably, it definitely is. Hmm. So I'm very excited. And they had a sort of a little like night where you can go get a sandwich a they're not open yet vip right night. but i was there so it wasn't VIP really VIP. Night. <laughs> well but we were invited specially for it yes. so that that was, it was awesome very, it was very cool uh yeah i'm excited for that to be open up and it's very close to our office here mm-hmm. which is also wonderful i'm gonna go get some sandwiches my son crushed his sandwich which was great matilda uh even tried a bite of hers. Really? Which is for her is a big deal. Because <laughs> she loves good. bread and she loves turkey and she loves cheese. But if you turn those into a sandwich, she's right. not interested. Uh huh. Because she's three. Mm-hmm. And that's what three year olds do. That's <laughs> Things right. that don't make sense. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> you think um, like watching your daughter refuse to eat three of her favorite foods because they're stacked on top of each other? is similar to God watching us do stupid stuff all the time. And he's just like, why, <laughs> why, why are you doing this? <clears throat> oh, I don't think he has, needs to ask why. Well, he <laughs> already has the answer to it. <laughs> but just, the frustration. But I am sure he there. just shakes his head and goes, okay, David's being David again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Does God get frustrated? Hmm. Like we know he gets. I just said he did. We know he gets, uh, ang- we know he gets angry, wrong. right? Mm-hmm. And, but like, does he get frustrated? Because I Frus- feel like- if frustration is an emotion w- being made in the image of God, right? One of the characteristics of that is emotion, mm-hmm. that no other creature has it like humans have it. Mm-hmm. And so I would think all of the emotions he has. They are in some way. In some way, they are sure. certainly righteous so as opposed righteous to some of ours. So, so some of those negative <clears throat> emotions like hate or anger yeah. or jealousy or those kinds of things are pure when God does it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think He has all of those emotions. I'm going to work on my righteous frustration. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, would like, I would like to include righteous I, frustration. Yeah, in I'm my bag. not sure that your emotions are all righteous. <laughs> no, I'm in or fact, mine. I'm, I'm sure that they're not, actually. <laughs> but, um, oh, man. All right. Well, why don't we uh, jump in? We're, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit today. Yes, we Spoil- are. Spoiler alert. Hopefully you've been joining us for this series. If you've missed any of the messages, you can find all of them on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash newhopehere or on our website, newhopehere.com. Uh, click on the watch tab and you can watch the in-person services there, whichever one you prefer. They're all available. And I encourage you to make sure that you check them out. If you missed a Sunday because you were spelunking, 
or uh, hot air ballooning, uh, you know, whatever. Huh. Just normal hobbies like that that normal. you might have. Uh, that's okay. Things happen. You can go and check out the messages that you missed. You Are you not a spelunker? Uh, I <laughs> have been in a cave before, but I can't say that I've ever spelunked. Yeah. What would what what do you have to do to say that you spelunk? Did I you think you have to have cave? you know like the a equipment. headlamp sure, and sure. ropes yeah. and crawling into mm -hmm. tight places. I mean, I've crawled in a tight place in a cave, but I but I I wasn't like you know I didn't have the other things. Did that count as spelunking? <laughs> Uh, now I'm intrigued. No, this is mean, the most important thing we can solve on the podcast. I, I'm I'm really trying to. I would love not if respond. One of you listeners would offer to take Pastor Mark spelunking. I don't know if there's any caves around here. I've never heard of any North Dakota caves. Uh, there is some where I live in Rapids and uh, in Rapids Black Hills. Okay, well yeah, there yep. you go. So mm -hmm. someone you know once and I once have you, been in those caves, but, but I haven't you didn't spelunked. Spelunk. No, well, I did a little tour something thing, to live you know, up to. You know where like, somebody walks you through and and then shuts off the lights to show you how dark yeah. it is and so turns the, them back maybe on. Maybe that one moment counted as spelunking when the mm. lights turned off. Because if they just left you in there, your only way out would be spelunking. That would be true. Yeah. All right. I think we've solved it. <laughs> so the Holy Spirit. Speaking of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the Holy Spirit probably is with you while you're spelunking if you uh, have accepted Christ. That so, is you true. Know, there's related somehow. Mm -hmm. I did my best, Pastor Mark. Yeah. All right. So the Holy Spirit, like I said, check out the messages. Yes, yeah, please <laughs> check out the messages. He didn't talk about spelunking at all <laughs> no. in the messages. Uh, you did talk about uh, the day of the Pentecost quite a bit. Yes. Uh, and again, it, I'm not going to re-explain what that is because I want you to have listened to Pastor Mark. So pause us if you haven't done that yet and go listen to the message. But um, for just the, the first thing that stood out to me was just the, the, the interesting difference between the, you know, the disciples who, who ran and hid when Jesus was being, you know, arrested and crucified and everything. And then, and then the boldness and, and you kept talking about that. <clears throat> and I was curious how much of that do you think was seeing Jesus resurrected you know, and the Holy, like, was it, was it all just exclusively the Holy Spirit? That's, or, or was it, oh, we, like, we saw Jesus resurrected now and, you know, that, because that would probably mm -hmm. give you some boldness as well. Like, I watched you die and now you're hanging out with me. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, that would help me with my fear and my um, maybe questioning or whatever. That, that was just the thought that I had. I think it is certainly possible but certainly not to the level of the Holy right. Spirit indwelling. Definitely. That's yeah. a huge difference. Yeah, I mean, they still were just all kind of hanging out together. Mm -hmm. They hadn't, it's not like right. the witnessing and the boldness to just go everywhere mm -hmm. and not be afraid of yep. their eventual terrible demise. And they didn't have to do anything faced. on their own because okay. Jesus was with them right. yep. until right. he ascended. Yep. And so like most of us would, we defer to Jesus. Let him do sure, the talking. Yeah. I'm oh, not going to jump out there and start talking, yeah. telling you about what he did <laughs> when, when he's, he's standing, standing right there. I mean, he's going to yeah. be the one to say this a whole lot better than me, so I'm not saying a word. <laughs> yeah. Except for Peter, who <laughs> likes, he to, couldn't help likes to speak up when he <laughs> needs to be quiet. Yeah, yeah, I like that guy for some reason. I yes, don't I don't know why that would be. <laughs> Intriguing, isn't it? <laughs> All right, you talked about the, the wind the fire and the speaking in tongues yes. and kind of the things, different things that those represent. But one of the things that I found interesting and you talked about it a little bit, but the difficulty in describing those things from mm -hmm. the, from the author of acts, right? Yeah. It, like it was a sound Sounds like, like blowing. It seemed was, it, like. Yeah, it seemed yes. like, and it, it, that's so fascinating to me. And it reminds me of, you know, when we read things in the, in the old Testament, for instance, you know, you, you think of like the wheel within the wheel, right? Mm -hmm. That's coming out of the sky. And you're like, what was the wheel within the wheel? Mm -hmm. Well, he, whatever it was, they clearly had no way of describing what it was. Similarly, when we right. read Revelation, right? We're Same like, way. These, these could have been all sorts of different things mm -hmm. that John, who lived, you know, 2,000 years ago, has no way of describing these incredible visions yep. he's being given. So he's doing his best. And it, that it reminded me of that here where it's, like, you're, yeah, that yeah. seemed like it's a description like. of heaven, anything that we yeah. know. I mean, it's yep. just we our minds just can't comprehend <clears throat> what it actually looks like. Right. And so they they describe it in the best 
terms that yep. we can come up with. Yeah. Which are limited. Right. Well, and as is our understanding. So yeah. Even if, oh, yeah. Like if you could accurately describe it, we couldn't understand what you're mm-hmm. describing because it's, you know, so far beyond yep. what we're understanding. Yeah, it's like eternity. I cannot yeah, I comprehend like, I like thinking about eternity. It. It hurts my that brain. Is, yeah. I don't like that one. <laughs> Leighton, my six-year-old, asked me not that long ago, like how how God had always existed or whatever. I was like, I don't want to talk about it. Like, it still hurts my head and I'm 36. I'm not going to be able to explain this to you ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stuff like that is difficult. So yeah, you can, you can see that, you know, and like he's doing his best to try to help us understand mm-hmm. what was happening. But, um, and that's why I emphasize the whole idea of what does this represent? Sure. Because we can get all hung up on, oh, I'd love to see the fire. Oh, yeah. the wind blowing through. Oh, you know, speaking in tongues and all those things. We get hung up on the literal part of that instead yeah. of picking up on what did it mean? Yeah. What did it represent? Well, I, I wanted to ask that. Why Why doesn't it look like that today when the Holy Spirit, like, comes in and dwells in us, right? Mm-hmm. I, okay, I, I accepted Christ which means I, like the Holy Spirit, I get the Holy Spirit. I, that's my prize. I, mm-hmm. you know, I, I won the game. I get the prize. The prize is the Holy Spirit. But it, I don't, I don't see a, or I don't hear something that sounds like a violent wind. I don't see something that looks like flaming tongues mm-hmm. coming upon me. Why, why doesn't that happen still today? Yeah. There, it was definitely something that was totally new, brand new, the introduction of the Holy Spirit beginning to indwell people, first time that it happened. And it's also the beginning of the church. It's the beginning of uh, believers in Jesus, other than those just walking around with him. And so I do think that there was a significant impact that was a one-time thing that took place. Mm. Now, there's a wide variety among believers today of how much of that goes on, like uh, the gifts of the Spirit, were they just for that time? The healing that took place when when Peter and John go and heal a guy and raise him up, and Paul did the same thing, was that just for that time, or does that go Mm. on? And uh, there's definitely things that happened on Pentecost that we do not see happening again. And I don't even hear of anybody claiming that it's happened in yeah. other places. So there is definitely stuff that is unique to that, but there are also things that were part of that. And again, not just the physical manifestation, but what it meant is something that goes on with us. Mm. So the wind, we don't see the wind, but the power that God gives us is something that goes on. And I do believe, um, and, and my tribe, my denomination would say, well, yes, these things still happen. God still does heal. God still does miraculous things that take place to, today, but n- certainly not to the extent that we see them sure. on that first day. Yeah. So yeah, you, the the wind was representing like power. Mm-hmm. Fire was representing purity. Then while you were talking about fire, you talked about obedience. And one of the one of my favorite things you said during that was, the Holy Spirit gives us strength, which like from the power, right? The, mm-hmm. the wind, strength for obedience. Right. And that's such a contrasting term in our modern culture, right? When we think about strength, like it's I don't have to obey me. anybody. It's like I'm, me. yeah, I'm, I'm mm-hmm. strong. I'm powerful, which means I get to do whatever I want because I don't need you. Mm-hmm. And you talked about strength for obedience. Talk to me a little bit about how that's so different from, from kind of our, our modern way of looking at strength mm-hmm. and understanding strength. The, like you say, there's so much that we <clears throat> like to do in our own strength. And the Christian life over and over again in so many different ways is not about my abilities, whether it's my strength, my mental comprehension, um, my ability to witness any of those things are by the grace of God. Even my ability to accept Jesus as Savior is not because I've rationalized this, I can figure this out, mm-hmm. I'm going to do it. It's all by the grace of God. God allows us to do it. It's by his strength. He is the one doing it, not me doing it. Yeah. And we recognize um, for all of us Because we are sinful people, being obedient, we don't do well at. In fact, the whole scripture 
reminds us of that, looking at the Israelites all the way through and the whole Jewish community and how they could not obey all the rules, how Mm -hmm. they failed over and over again. And all of those stories are so clear for us in the scripture. It's not just, oh, these great righteous men did everything right. We just see them committing acts that are like, whoa, Moses is supposed to be this great man of God and he killed somebody. You know, that, that's just bizarre. And Samson being a judge and, and hanging out with a prostitute. I mean, these things just like, it's proof to us that we cannot do these things in our own strength. Mm-hmm. And to say, well, I'm going to obey God. Yes, he can give you strength to do that. But you do it us on your own? No, you're going to mess up. Yeah. Uh, when the, so the third one I said was speaking in tongues that you talked about representing proclamation, sharing of the gospel. Mm-hmm. You talked about how the the tongues that are being talked about here. Yeah, that, that's not like the spiritual gift of tongues, like how we understand it. This was like this was a miracle of hearing, mm-hmm. not of speaking, um, which I found interesting. I had never really thought of it this way before, and I'm sure I didn't. In, not the first person to make this connection, but it's kind of like a reverse Tower of Babel when the Holy Spirit came, right? Like we had the Tower oh. of Babel, right? And they were, okay, we're going to do things on our own and we're going to get we're going to get close to God. And so he not only separates them, but separates their language. Languages. And you can't understand mm-hmm. each other. And then in this moment where they're all coming together to follow Christ and the Holy Spirit's coming upon them, no, even though you all speak these different languages, you're all going to understand each other hmm. right now. And I was like, oh, that's really kind of cool. That, that is very cool. Um, but why do we often confuse the tongues in this moment, right? This miracle of hearing that you were talking about mm-hmm. with the spiritual gift of tongues, because there are, you know, there are people out there, there are denominations out there that'll say like, no, no, if you, if you have the Holy Spirit, you will speak in tongues. Cause it's the first thing that happened when the spirit came upon the people at the day of the Pentecost, they spoke in tongues. Mm-hmm. So you're going to speak in tongues if you're full of the spirit. Yep. I, the Wesleyan church, I believe would not be one of those. I'm not from the, I didn't grow up in the Wesleyan church, but you, right. you can be full of the spirit and not speak in tongues. Right. I believe. That is believe. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't want to <laughs> put you in a bad spot there. <laughs> but often it's, it comes from this passage, right? Where it's, okay, the spirit came, they spoke in tongues, so we have to right. do it that way as well. But you were telling us this isn't this gift of tongues. This was different. Why do we get that confused? Uh, there are th- different ways <laughs> that scripture talks about speaking in tongues. Mm-hmm. Uh, there and different interpretations that according to different denominations, different tribes interpret them in different ways. So there's this time at Pentecost that in that situation, it appears to be very clear that they are hearing known languages. Mm -hmm. That is different than than the gift of tongues, which again, you're going to have different views on what that is. Uh, actually, we as Wesleyans would say we believe it is a gift to speak in languages that we have not learned. Mm-hmm. We don't condemn somebody that says, no, this is an angelic tongue yeah. and not something that we understand. And And Corinthians talks about needing an interpreter if yeah. that's used in a public place. And so that is a different type of mm-hmm. speaking in tongues. There's a third type that where it talks about um, the Spirit speaking uh, in words that can't, we can't utter. Yeah. And so as a prayer language, there would be mm-hmm. some that would say, no, there's a prayer language. And so there are groups of Christians that would say all three of those are the same thing. It's sure. all the, that's, there's not a distinction between those at mm-hmm. all. Um, and then other Christian groups are going to say, no, no, they're very different things mm-hmm. um, and would espouse some as known tongues, some as um, as an angelic language or whatever. Yeah. going to have different views on what all that looks like. Why, why do you think that's something that we've, I don't want to say fought over, but fought over is probably accurate. I mean, mm-hmm. I, so I grew up in the Christian Missionary Alliance, um, which uh, was was founded by the same person who the uh, Assembly of God considers to be their founder because the Assembly of God broke off of the Christian Missionary Alliance. They were the Pentecostal wing of the okay. Christian Missionary Alliance. And so they, they like it, it split this denomination in mm-hmm. half be- because of, you know, tongues was like a major, yeah. major part of it. Why? Obviously, this is a huge moment <clears throat> in the history of our faith, right? The day of the Pentecost and this incredible thing is happening and these people are hearing about Jesus in their own language and it's a super cool thing. But I feel like it so often is something that gets us 
caught up rather mm -hmm. than further forward and you know furthering yep. the kingdom and things there's just a whole lot of things uh that we as different as christians believe and interpret scripture differently and the main point is it, if you declare jesus as lord and serve him as your savior and lord mm -hmm. that's where we agree yep. and that's what we need to spend our time addressing together yeah. it's not wrong to have differences of opinion because we're going to interpret things in scripture sure. differently yep. and not always have the same ideas of what that is and we can just get hung up on yeah secondary things that this is not critical yeah. But if you have an experience, for example, if somebody has an experience that they believe that they spoke in an angelic language or uh, an unknown language mm -hmm. in some way, and that is a great uh, impact on your life yeah. and was part of what changed you, just like sure. it changed these guys at Pentecost— then if that happened to you, you're going to want to make sure, sure I have this experience. Yeah. Do you realize how great this is? You need this yeah. too. And because it is so emotional for us, because things that God does in our individual lives are so impactful mm -hmm. that we want to share those with other people, mm -hmm. and we can be very forceful with that. And yeah. it's just something we need to recognize. God deals with people in different ways. Yep. And so even though I may okay. believe that the gift of tongues or even pe or definitely the Pentecost tongues were known languages, that doesn't give me the right to condemn yeah. somebody else if they believe that God has worked with them in a different way. Yeah. Because God can work with them in a different way. He does not ask my permission of how to do <laughs> it w different with somebody else. Yeah, and sure. so I can stand on what my belief is and what I believe God has revealed to me, but as as Christians loving each other, I don't have to make sure that you believe exactly the way that yeah. I believe on secondary issues. Yeah. The primary issue, Jesus is Lord. Yep. Primary issue of the Trinity, primary issue of the Holy Spirit indwelling us. Those are things that we all as Christians go, yeah, yeah, we agree. Yep. What that looks like, how that's played out, may be totally different for you than it is for me. Yeah. Uh, and that's okay. God works in different ways with different people. Yeah. You, you talked towards the end about b like being filled with the spirit as a, as a continuous action. Mm -hmm. I remember w one of the things my dad, um, I don't know if I, he, we probably talked about it like in our, you know, father son relationship, but I distinctly remember <clears throat> like the first time I heard him talk about the uh, first time I remember, you know, was right, listening right. when he talked about it, mm -hmm. how, how like you wake up every morning and ask the spirit to fill you that day and to lead you and to guide you. And, mm -hmm. and I, like it had never crossed my mind up to that point in my life to do that. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> like I, I already got him. Like, why do I have yep. to do that? But, but that's, that's definitely a, you know, you said that the, it's be filled with the spirits, mm -hmm. the present tense, and that like we need to continuously it's a continuous be thing. doing this, mm -hmm. asking to get more and more filled. And yeah, and it's not so much <clears throat> that we, we somehow lost him overnight, you know, that kind <laughs> of seeped out. He, yep. yep. <laughs> the Holy Spirit seeped out of my life. It's not for his sake to, yeah. oh, yes, come back in. Yep. It's for our sake, recognizing the Holy Spirit is within me, yep. and I need to be reminded of that yep. in the way that I act and that I'm dependent on him, and I don't go off on my own strength yep. trying to do things, but it is a Spirit of God working in yeah. me. So Continuing it's, to submit to him. Yeah, so he, he, it's, oh, it's just, I just really want to emphasize it's not, you know, God's not able to keep us. God's yeah. not able to continue to indwell right. us. And so we got to beg him to come back. That That's just not the way it is. It is our frailty yep. and our forgetfulness that, yeah, he has filled me. And yes, I need to be dependent on him every day, every moment. Yep. And so praying a prayer like that, I think, is very appropriate. Mm -hmm. But it's not a prayer asking God to do this again. It's right. really a prayer saying, I need yep. to recognize this and <clears throat> I need to be dependent on him and yep. let him speak through me and work through me and be the one doing it, not just me depending on me. Yeah. It, 
kind of makes me think, so obviously God used in scripture a lot of um, metaphors and analogies to things we would understand, mm-hmm. right? Even just, we talked about it, like the, the father and son relationship thing, right? Yeah. That that helps us understand right. because we get right. those things. <clears throat> it makes me think of, you know, ancient times, right? We had kings and you didn't just bow to the king that one time. And then the next time you saw him, you're like, what's up, Carl? How you doing? I don't know if there's ever a king named Carl. Yeah, I don't remember. Maybe in Scandinavia, you know, <laughs> like Germany, probably. Yeah, um, not a Jewish name, I <laughs> no, don't No, probably think. not, a, not mm-hmm. a king in the in that area of the world. But um, like you would have to bow to that king every single time you saw him because you were showing your continued submission to that king as your leader, mm-hmm. right? Which... You know, for those of us who like we love the democracy that we live in, we're like, I'm glad I don't have to do that anymore. But that's that's kind of what we're doing there with the Holy mm-hmm. Spirit is every day I'm I'm choosing to submit to you. I'm choosing yeah. to give you the reins and to follow your guidance in my mm-hmm. life. And I think that's something really, really important. And it is a, a a humbling thing to do because we do like, you know, going back to the like power for obedience, strength for obedience thing. You know, we don't think of obedience as strength. And part of that probably is because freedom is a very important thing in our culture mm-hmm. here in America and even just the world today, right? There's a lot more democracy and freedom, and that's a bigger focus than it's been for the last every minute of human history right. since we organized. Mm-hmm. And and so I, I think that's a, an important step for all of us to take. I know for me, when I'm actively doing that, I can completely see a difference in the presence of the Holy Spirit throughout my day. Even if it's not a day where anything big happens, it's Mm -hmm. just he, he, you know, guides me in the little stuff that still matters, even though it's the little stuff. And so I, yeah, I think that's a really important one. You talked about opportunity um, when you were talking about the, the proclamation Uh speaking in tongues, representing proclamation. Now, a lot of us might've heard that and been like, okay, you're, you're telling me I should ask for opportunities to be around people that, don't know Christ. Mm -hmm. But I'm also told all the time, like I need to, we grow best when we're in community with other believers. You guys say it all the time at New Hope. And Mm -hmm. I like, if I'm surrounded by bad influences all the time, they're going to influence me negatively. So shouldn't I be surrounding myself with good influences? Shouldn't I have Christians be the people in my life? How do, how do I balance that with, I need to have, I need to go hang out with the the sinners so I can tell them about Jesus. Yes. (laughs) Cool. My answer is <laughs> yes. Um, <clears throat> we balance is something that we always have trouble with in our sure. Christian walk. Uh, and so one time I'll be preaching and saying, boy, you need the, the fellowship of believers. We need yeah. it. In fact, in this message, I mentioned it, that <clears throat> the value of being together with other believers and how critical that is. And then also uh, in an, you know, another message or even in the same message like this one, I'm saying, man, you need to have some people in your life that don't know the Lord. Yep. And for each of us, that is different according to our... Uh, strength and abilities, dependence on God to to work within us. There are times in my life where uh, I am very weak spiritually and need more Christian support sure. and need that. Other times when uh, when I may not need that as much. Mm-hmm. Rule of thumb overall is those that you are closest to. Uh, you need to have a good core of believers around you Mm -hmm. that are praying for you that are encouraging you that are living this trying to live the same lifestyle that you're living that is critical but what often happens in the church is the longer you're a christian the less unbelieving friends you have yep because we've been gathering together and we become friends and so the people i hang with are all believers and i find a lot of Christians that have been Christians for 40, 50 years uh, don't have anybody in their life that they're influencing mm-hmm. that doesn't know the Lord. And they're very comfortable with that, and right. that's very, very nice. <laughs> you know, we like that. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it's critical for our own spiritual health, but we've got to always. Uh, be looking at that area. And again, back to the go, grow, and give. We got to be going. Yeah. And the longer we're Christians, the less close friends we have that aren't Christians. And we need to be building relationships mm-hmm. with people that don't know the Lord. 
what if I have like a couple Facebook friends who don't know Jesus and every like month I just post like, hey, if you don't love Jesus, you're going to go to hell. Like just for them to see that. Does that count? Is I'm, that gonna, uh, it's not what you're talking about. That's not okay. exactly okay. what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure that that's check. the most effective <laughs> witness to them uh, either. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think you you put it well when you said going out and being intentional about being in relationship with mm-hmm. people who don't know Christ because we can reflect Christ in, in the yep. way we treat them in our relationship. And, mm-hmm. and yeah. Um, last question for you. You talked about <clears throat> like the two different methods of, you know, the, the come and see evangelism, mm-hmm. right? Uh, Philip to Nathaniel, like or the, the Samaritan woman, like, come, I, I can't tell you, just yep. come and look. Like, yep. mm-hmm. um, but then you also talked about sharing your testimony. Mm-hmm. And, you, you know, you talked about all the training that you had. And I had a lot of it too. I remember going to oh, yes. conference, like outreach conferences mm-hmm. where an entire day was spent teaching us how to write our testimony. Yes. And then the next day was how to share our testimony. And then you mm-hmm. practice with your friends. And But a lot of people didn't experience that growing up, right? right? And Or maybe they did and the training was bad. Like, I don't mm-hmm. know, there's a lot of different, how, what, how, how do I prepare my testimony if I'm somebody that, you're, I, hear, I hear Pastor Mark talking about his testimony. I'm like, a, I might be a new Christian. And I don't really even know what that word's supposed to mean. I think B, we worry I too it? much about it. I mean, yeah. when um, Scripture tells us, don't worry about what you're going to say because the Holy Spirit will speak through you. I think we yeah. work, worry, yeah. I've got to say it just right, yeah. or somebody's going to go to hell because I didn't say <laughs> it the right way, yeah. uh, or do it you know, a certain pattern or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I just love the story that I shared uh, and it, it's a story from God's word uh, that Jesus healed the blind man. And they're all just accusing him and trying to figure out, and why did he do this? Yeah. And who is he? And explain this to us. And he can't explain anything. Yeah. All that he knows is what he says. Once I was blind yeah. and now I see. And I think a genuine saying, I can't explain this. I don't know what it is. But since I asked Jesus into my life, since I started attending this Bible study, since I started going to this church, it's just different. Yeah. And that's, that's all you need to say. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to be able to have all the theology put together of, well, right. this is what happened on this day, and I was yeah. regenerated, and, <laughs> you know, and I was adopted, and, and I was forgiven, and all this. You don't need to have all the right words. Yeah. Uh, again, if people are seeing your life, they that is the testimony yep. and this blind man is going i could see <laughs> you know that's yep. that's yep. that's what i know and and i think that the holy spirit uses that in speaking to other people and right. letting them know wow this guy is different something's going on for him and i know this person and i know he's genuine and he's not giving me all the right words but i I see that something is different in his life, right. and all he has to do is say, yeah, all I can say is Jesus did this. And you go into that interaction with an understanding that you, you are not the one that's going to save that person. Mm-hmm. The Holy Spirit is going exactly. to call them to himself. Mm-hmm. You might get to be lucky, and God's going to use you in that yep. moment. That's yep. the coolest thing ever. Like I, it's not. I don't have sixty-seven different stories of all the different people I've converted, but the couple people that have been close in my life that I've got to walk along with them as they came to know the Lord. It's the coolest thing in the world. And I know I'm incredibly incapable of doing it Mm -hmm. because there's been people that I've tried to do it. I'm like this, I'm converting this person. Like there, I'm going to convince them that Jesus is the way and I'm going to do it because like all the things you were saying, we don't need to do. I'm going to have all the right words and all the right arguments and all the right, you know, theological statements and scientific methods and and nothing has happened. And then Mm -hmm. the times where God has just clearly put me in that spot and it's just, Share with them your life and what God's done for you yep. because I'm calling them to me and they're going to see your story and that's going to help them mm-hmm. in, in their in their step. And so don't don't ever misunderstand your role in this situation. You right. are not in you are not the primary. Yes, you are the secondary and the yep. Holy Spirit is the one that's calling them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that not only does that make you you know less worried about your is my testimony perfect, but it also cal- can calm you down a little bit because mm-hmm. it can be nerve wracking to yeah. be like. Like, I do want this person to know God, so right. I don't want to say the wrong thing and mess it up. I can't mess it up. Right. God's calling them to him. They're, mm-hmm. they're going to respond to him. God's just using me, and I'm yep. going to let him use me. Yep. 
<clears throat> All right. Well, we've got some discussion questions uh, about the Holy Spirit filling believers here. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So, yeah, answer these uh, amongst yourself. If you're listening with other people, however you want to do that, uh, you can find these in the podcast notes or uh, the video description on YouTube. First question, what is the difference between the Holy Spirit anointing someone for a task and the Holy Spirit filling them? Semantics. I think it's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, question Might two. What, question two, was the work of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost just for the disciples or is it for believers today? And then the next question, which has like nine sub questions. So just mm -hmm. bear with me here. Uh, the Holy Spirit brought power, purity, and proclamation. We talked about uh, all three of those. Pastor Mark went into detail on those in his message. Can you think of examples in your life when each of these were your experience? So power, purity, and proclamation. Which one do you do best at and which one is the greatest challenge for you? Do you, do you have one of those off the top of your head that you know is like this one's I'm the best at or this one is the biggest challenge for me? Just out of curiosity. <clears throat> hmm. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> sure. All right then. Good. I think uh, I think the 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 power one is probably the one that might be the biggest challenge for me. Just hmm. understanding the power that I have with the Holy Spirit is something I have to be pretty conscious of, or I don't I don't feel that way just naturally. I don't feel ah, I've got the power of the Holy yep. Spirit to power well, to do all these things. Thinking about it, probably <laughs> for me the proclamation. Which is very Which is interesting, interesting as a because pastor. that's what I do. Yep. I mean, I preach the word, but it is amazing how often I feel uh, totally like I didn't do well. Yeah. I mean, and I've come to realize that the Holy Spirit uses it often when I'm thinking that did yeah. not go well. And yet God uses it and surprises me. Yeah. And people, of course, I'm proclaiming preaching, you know, is yeah. my proclamation. And I'll get done with the message going, oh, that just, that was flat. <laughs> just I a mean, waste that, of a Sunday. That just kind of <laughs> went right over the, 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 the cliff, the stand that I'm using and just, <laughs> plop, you know, that <laughs> crawled out. You know, that, wow, that was not yeah. good at all. And that's when I'll have somebody come up and say, wow, yeah. man, God used you today. Yeah. I'm going, Really? <laughs> I missed it. I did. I, yeah, I, wow. That, that's good to know because I didn't feel like it to be. Uh. Well, yeah. Uh, feel free to answer those in the comments as well. But definitely, if you have somebody in your life, a spouse, uh, someone close to you that you can go over those with, or we know that there's some small groups that use those discussion questions as well, I uh, would love to have you answer those along with somebody else. Thank you, Pastor Mark, for your teaching, for your time on the podcast here. I always enjoy getting to sit down and chat with you for a little bit and throw some questions at you. I didn't have any questions you couldn't answer this week, like last week. So I got to do better next week. I got to <laughs> come up <laughs> with some. <laughs> but uh, New Hope family, thank you guys for being here with us. We love you so much. We hope to see you next week as the series continues. And then we will see you next time. Yeah.